Yeast, if you want to make any alcoholic beverage, you're not going to get far without the stuff. But I've realized that I honestly, I don't know much about how it is commercially propagated. Luckily, the owners of New Zealand's first commercial yeast lab are happy to walk us through the process. Should we take a drive? Froth Tech are located here in New Zealand and are creating liquid yeast cultures for the craft brewing industry in New Zealand. Anyway, uh, I've got a two hour ish drive. I don't really know where I'm going, so I'm putting my faith in Google. Go, go, gadget, Google Maps. Google, I thought we were friends. How's it going, lads? Yo, yo. Hey. <laughs> I'm super freaking excited about this. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I do not know much about how yeast is produced or propagated or whatever you, I don't even know what to call it, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, can you show us around? We sure can. There is a lot of cool stuff to get through here, but let's start at the beginning with the yeast bank in the cryo freezer. Uh, so this is essentially our yeast bank. This is where we have all our mother cultures frozen at minus 80 degrees. At those ultra low temperatures, we will basically prevent any mutation or genetic drift and we can be very confident that the yeast we draw out of this is the same as it was when it went in. It effectively works as the starting point for all of our propagations and it ensures that we're working with a clean and consistent stock of the strains that we offer. So the first step in the propagation process is once we get our cultures out of the bank, they get streaked onto a slant of agar and this is what we will draw from regularly at the start of our propagations and by having these working stocks it means that we don't have to continually go in and out of the bank. Here we've got our laminar flow hood or our biosafety cabinet. Uh, in this environment we create a sterile working area. So once we've got our working stock uh, we will put a small amount of wort into a small flask like this and we will use an inoculation loop, which is essentially just a loop of stainless steel uh, that will get immersed into the hot coil. Hold it there for three seconds, it will become sterile, it will heat off any bacteria or growth on it. And then we'll use that loop to pick up small amounts of colonies and culture from our working stock and inoculate it into the flask. The yeast kind of enters an environment that it's also its food. As it's eating that food, it's increasing its population. More and more yeast cells are growing. And after about 24, 48 hours, it's gonna run out of food. So from those small flasks, we take that and, and put it into a larger volume of wort. And with each stage, that volume of wort is increasing so that there's not too little yeast in there, but not too much. It's got the right amount of food and the right growing conditions to increase its population. There is a bunch of cool equipment around this place to make a home brewer or home distiller froth at the mouth, but what you will not find is a mash tun. They're using something else to make the food for the yeast. So this drum right here is liquid malt extract or LME. Um, it's basically a concentrated syrup made in the same similar way to uh, beer is made. So you start with your barley grains, you mash them, you boil them, it's then concentrated into a syrup and packed into this here drum. And this is the main ingredient that our yeast likes to eat. And because we're growing yeast for breweries, we want to feed them a food that they're familiar with. Along with that, we supplement it with some nutrients so they're feeling extra boosted to, to do the job. This is where the preparation of the media happens. This is where we cook our work. This right here is our pressure kettle. It's kind of similar to a brewery kettle, but we actually seal off the lid. Uh, we heat the wort inside and it comes up to pressure, which raises the boiling temperature to 121 degrees and sterilizes the wort inside. Sanitation is important here because 
We're growing a microbe. The yeast is growing on wort, sugars, which is a really great environment for other spoilage organisms, other microbes, to jump in there and, and cause a bit of havoc. We're starting with a clean base, and once we add our pure yeast culture in there, it's only that organism that's growing in the tank. This motor up here is stirring a rake inside so we can mix that malt extract with water. We can dose in our yeast nutrients. The high gravity wort being stronger is pumped down through here into our heat exchange, diluted with sterile water, and together those go into our propagation vessels. Normally in a brewery or a distillery, yeast turns sugar into carbon dioxide and alcohol. But in this case, a constant supply of oxygen in the form of filtered air ensures that the yeast stays in reproduction mode and they end up with almost no alcohol produced. Alright dude, so New Zealand has never had, as far as I know, you're definitely the only yeast manufacturer right now. Yep, that and is has, correct. Has there ever been another yeast manufacturer in New Zealand? No, no, there's no, <laughs> never been a commercial beer yeast lab in New Zealand before. Crazy, considering, mm. uh, like you were saying to me earlier, hops, the craft scene in general is just exploding here, right? Yep, yeah, I mean New Zealand's world renowned, as you say, our hops, yeah. our, our barley and malt is fantastic, and our water is renowned for being pure, yeah, so yeast yeah. was the only ingredient that we hadn't tapped into yet buying a yeast product, what's the advantage for the customer when they're buying it from someone local? Other than the, the warm fuzzies of supporting, you know, someone that's on yeah. the side of the world. Yeah, yeah, so I guess there's the, the human element of actually right. being able to um, ask questions, interact, and get someone who's on the t same time scale as you. Um, if you of do course. have any queries and, you know, you've got a rapid order that needs filling, those oh shit moments. Um, <laughs> we, we know can, those. Yeah, 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 <laughs> we can help with those, you know, because cool. um, before that you were kind of stuck. Um, there is also uh, the fact that it's extremely fresh. You're getting a healthier product, a lot fresher, um, and yeah, without the carbon footprint of shipping it from overseas. So from there in the laboratory, or our uh, yeast nursery as we call it, that's where the yeast is just starting to grow up, starting to build up smaller population and that's more a scale you might be familiar with at a homebrew scale uh, with the glassware. So from there we come out here into the production area and this is where things start to get a little more serious. We come into this stainless steel uh, propagation vessel, it's 100 litres and after the 100 litre propagation vessel it goes up tenfold into this 1,000 litre vessel. Every step of the way, right from the early stages in glassware, right up into this big tank here, we're monitoring the yeast health, the yeast population growth, just to really know what's happening. On top of knowing what the yeast is doing, we also need to make sure there's no other unwanted organisms or contamination in there. The first aspect of this quality control process is a cell count. A cell count checks the viability of the yeast by measuring the ratio of live cells to dead cells. A sample is taken and homogenized and then serially diluted down to a density that's in the measurable range for their equipment. Next, a cell stain is added to make the dead cells visually discernible from the live cells. And the final solution is added into a microscope slide where capillary action pulls the sample across to fill the chamber. And finally, the slide is loaded into a digital microscope which is hooked up to a tablet rocking some sweet ass software that does the cell counts for them. So yeah, uh, you can see the live ones are clear, nice and clear, and we've got a couple that have a, a light staining. So those are, are likely dead cells and the software will recognize that. Simon, show us what you've got there, mate. Oh yeah. So can you tell us what the advantage of this is over, or the difference, I should say, between liquid yeast and dry yeast? When it comes to liquid versus dry, I mean, in terms of yeast, it's all about the flavor. So a, a fresh liquid yeast is gonna complement the, the flavor profile, the aroma. Um, it's gonna promote uh, strong ester production, 
good attenuation, mm. fast fermentation. The drying process itself is not something that's beneficial to the health of the yeast. It's just something that's necessary to get it into that form factor. You're, you're um, putting it through a drying process, extruding it, and so on. It, it's hard on the yeast and it's also energy intensive. Ah, yeah, so okay. a bigger carbon footprint. So once the propagation in this final stage is finished, there's, a, there's about 100 trillion yeast cells in here, and we need to get them out and separate them from that spent wort to be able to send them away to breweries. So this tank has got a glycol jacket in the wall of it that allows us to control the temperature. At the end of the final stage, we set that to crash cool, to chill, down to two degrees. And so with that colder temperature, all the yeast cells fall down and flocculate into the bottom cone there. And as they pack and condense, we're then able to drain off the spent wort and package the pure yeast slurry straight out the bottom of the cone into our yeast holding tank ready for packaging. So here's the yeast packaged up. You can see it's a nice thick slurry in there. And here we have 12 trillion cells ready to go to a brewery. When they're ordering, they'll let us know how much beer they're wanting to make and what the gravity is going to be. And based on that, we can recommend how much yeast they're going to need to ferment that beer. So for your standard ale, up to 1060 gravity, we recommend 0.75 million cells per mil per degree Plato. For lagers, it's double that. And for higher gravity beers, it's uh, 1 million cells per mil per degree Plato. And so we're actually able to package a specific population, specific cell count of yeast into a jug, and then the brewery's gonna get the exact pitch rate they're looking for, which means consistency every time. So being a liquid yeast product, it is quite perishable. So it needs to be kept refrigerated. And in terms of getting that to breweries, we wrap this up with insulation with ice packs in there. It goes in a box and it's sent by overnight courier arriving at the brewery the next day and straight in the chiller, ready for the brew day. I really can't say a big enough thank you to the guys at Froth Tech. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Simon, for putting up with me for two days and letting us record this stuff. If you found this interesting and you're looking to get more information from them, we did actually record a almost two hour podcast as well. So you can check that out up here or find it on uh, any of the podcatchers online. I also need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. These are the people that make this sort of thing completely and utterly impossible. I can take off down to Wellington for a couple of days out of a week and it is thoroughly, thoroughly appreciated that you guys enable me to do that. So thank you, I appreciate it. One other little thing I need to tell you is the Chase the Craft Glen Cairn glasses are now available on the Chase the Craft website. Uh, so if you want one of those, go along and grab them. They do ship from America. So uh, Americans, you get it good for shipping. Everyone else, I'm sorry I had to pick somewhere for them to ship from. <laughs> if you like this kind of video where I go and hang out with people in the industry and do something on site. I need you to let me know guys. I, I love making these sorts of videos. They're absolutely awesome. But to be honest, they take three or four times more time than what goes into a normal video. So if you're not into them, uh, I need to know quick so I don't keep wasting my time. So if you do, please guys, help me out here. Uh, give the YouTube algorithm a kick in the pants. Thumbs up. Comments in the comment section down below and share it around to anyone that you think might like this video. Especially the uh, the brewers in your life, because let's face it, this is a little more brewer centric. All right guys, this has been an absolute blast. I haven't been excited about this video in a long time. So uh, I'll catch you next time guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.